Sure. My name is Tim Lubbers, and I'm the spokesperson for Semco Energy Gas Company. And um, as most of your uh, audience knows, we had an outage in Lawrence caused by a vehicle accident. And it occurred uh, at not a great time, just a couple of days before Christmas. And we mobilized uh, our, a bunch of crews from downstate, uh, several crews from that were already located in the Upper Peninsula to get everybody back on. And as I was saying earlier, our crews and our company just really appreciate the patience and the courtesy and the support we received from the LOTS community, from emergency response folks um, to the hotel and food vendors that we used while we were up there, and to the community. Uh, we had folks bringing food by and supporting us and thanking our crews, and that really helped make the process go a lot quicker. The community was so supportive and patient in the process. So we, we really appreciate it, but that community support is one of the things that made the relight process. I, I know for some folks who didn't get their gas on till the very end, I know they may not have thought it was quick, but in a gas outage of this size, really we were able to get it done pretty quickly. Well, I can never speak on behalf of the community, but I'm pretty sure in this case everybody is impressed! Exclamation mark! Now, I, I was told like yes, I was told like 60 or 70 people were sent up here. Can you kind of? Yeah, so we had over 45 people from the lower peninsula, some from different parts of Michigan, from the Port Huron Chesterfield area, from the Battle Creek and Niles area, and from the Holland area where we have service. So we sent crew up about over 45 uh, individuals up on, um, they went up on Friday morning, or they left Friday morning. For some of them, it took eight or ten hours to get there. Um, and then we had about uh, 10 or 15 individuals in the Upper Peninsula that we dispatched to uh, to manage the, uh, the outage. And so those groups, those folks that were there earlier uh, were active in the first part of the process, whereas I think your audience already knows we had to go individually shut down everyone. So then by the time our crews from downstate got up there, we were ready to repressurize the system and relight everyone. And do you know any costs involved? No, we haven't totaled those right now. I'm sure those costs will come, but uh, right, you know, for the past couple of days, our sole focus was on getting everybody on, making sure everybody was safe. And uh, one of the things, and your audience may may or may not be interested in, and we were tracking our guys coming back, and I found out uh, early this morning that all of our crews made it back to their homes safely. So, uh, so that was a good thing. And we'll we'll assess the cost and everything later. Later, our goal was. Everybody back on and everybody safe. Is it safe, though, I mean, to say in the millions? Because this is a lot of people. I, I don't think it's safe to say that. It is okay. a lot of people, but it was pretty compact time. And so I don't think uh, I don't think millions would be an accurate number. At least I don't have any information on that. Um, okay. I, uh, I, it'll be expensive, but it's not, it's not that high. Okay. And um, can you kind of explain to us what happened? When I first heard it, I just heard about the main, and then I heard it was actually a building... Can you explain to me what happened and how, in other words, normally when you hit a gas main, you're not going to have a fire? Well, that's right. It, the, it is, I understand it was a vehicle accident at our city gate station. So, um, you know, what was hit by this vehicle was some piping that we take gas from the interstate pipeline, and then we um, measure it and regulate it down to a lower pressure and distribute it to customers, in this case, to the community of Lawrence. So the vehicle actually went through our fence at the at the city gate station, knocked off some gas, and there was flowing gas. I do not know what ignited the gas, but um, but that's what happened. Okay. And uh, repairs there, um, they're, they're, did, that was made, I thought the pipes would have been very hot, but they made the repairs rather quickly, hey? In, in several hours. So, you know, we, we uh, shut the gas off. That's the first priority. So they shut the gas off. The, the fire was extinguished, and then they could get in there and see what the damage was. And fortunately, the damage was, for the most part, above the ground. So if we would have had to excavate, that may have taken an additional number of hours, but we didn't. So we were able to make those repairs above ground. And then, as you can imagine, in that fire, there were wires that were melted and some electronics. So, so they had to manage through all that. 
But again, as I said, um, and I think if your readers were following our web updates, we had to go to everyone and shut them off, which took a number of hours, which allowed our repair crews to repair that gate station. So once we had everyone off, we the gate station was ready to be repressurized. We were able to pressure it up and then begin relighting folks. And and we paid attention to folks that uh, needed a little more special uh, care. For example, there was you know the hospital had backup fuel, so we we weren't as concerned about them. But I understood there was a um, an elder care facility. I can't remember the name. I apologize. Um, uh, that we were focused on. They were one of the first to get back online because they didn't have backup. And then there were a few customers who had let us know they had some health issues during this process, and we paid special attention to those folks. Um, and, what is, uh, and what we were able to get them back on. Now, I will say, our crews are still working. There are still, and I, I, I checked before I called you, there's still some number of customers, it's less than 30, who we can't get into their homes. We either can't get a hold of them or, or something, and we're continuing to try to reach those folks. Um, so there still are a few folks that maybe were gone for the holidays or maybe they vacation in the wintertime or who knows, uh, but we're still actively trying to get those guys, and I know we have crews in the lots working today just getting those last customers who maybe, maybe they were gone for the holidays and they just came home, you know. Well, you guys made it very easy, it sounds like. I mean, everybody's been astonished with the quickness of this. You know, and like you said, you throw in the holiday. 